you, you, you had the, the statistics already. So there's a strong link between uh, women on boards and better performances or financial performances uh, as it relates to uh, women leadership uh, on the board. So why is there still low level of female representation on Nigeria corporate bonds? That's, that's the, uh, the conversations that have been ongoing. Okay, so thank you for that question. Yeah. Um, there are so many factors that we can, um, you know, point to as the reason for this. But of course, it is very important to mention that for you to have women on board, hmm. the structures in the corporate space have to be, you know, reworked to accommodate how women uh, are able to rise. Right. So we understand that women typically have so much that they have to juggle. They have to juggle different balls and ensure that none of these balls fall. And if the corporate uh, organizations are really interested in helping, you know, these women shine mm -hmm. and then take their place, you know, in that space, the structures have to be reviewed. Now, mm. this is not to take out the place of meritocracy, not at right. all. Right. Right? It is simply to open up you know that space and consciously look at um you know giving that opportunity to women mm -hmm. that have displayed their wealth of experience and knowledge and also have the capacity to build bridges mm. in their industries mm -hmm. so in other words if they merit it i mean let them have it Interesting. But what would you consider, uh, yet we're still witnessing um, this low level of women representation, what would you consider really as the biggest challenge facing um, women taking the position of leadership at the boardroom? Okay, so um, it's twofold because, um, you know, we cannot say one without mentioning the other. We'll talk about sponsorship, and by sponsorship we mean... Um, key decision makers in the corporate system that speak for the women that are capable of, you know, running the affairs, as it were. Mm -hmm. So there is that. And there is also the um, bit on the women uh, front where um, you have to consciously ensure that you build up your brand, you um, set up some form of uh, visibility for yourself. So I, I'll, I'll explain further. So. Mm. Um, Women are serious-minded individuals in the corporate space, and I, I do not say that lightly, right? Because uh, typically you don't expect, or typically you are um, you are considered to be a bit emotional as a woman, you know. Right. You know, you hear um, people have conversations, and when a woman is really passionate about putting up points across you could hear something like um, oh she's been aggressive right and it is very important that as a woman you know how to be assertive as opposed to being aggressive right um, understanding the numbers understanding how to speak the language of business there are industry keywords you really mm -hmm. need to latch on to and you really need to understand the numbers mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll give an example so we can say 2021 is like the year for women because, you know, the recent appointments, you know, in b the banking sector, where we had the number of women rise through the ranks to become MD CEO, mm. you know, like Unity Bank, GTB, you know, and a host of others. You will see if you go through their profiles that, you know, they have, a lot of them have um, certificates from business schools. You see that some of them are um, members of um, organ um, organizations or corporate bodies like CI. Um, is it CI? Um, what's it called you, now? You, you mean um, uh, the the uh, the chartered? Yes, the chartered institute 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 area. Yes, okay. Okay. that has to do with stockbroking and mm. you know all of that. And you especially see that as it relates to managing business exactly. and making decisions for exactly. for it. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So it's not mm. enough to um, stay in your corner and do your work. You have to consciously go out to create this, you know, um, visibility for yourself mm. in the spaces that really matter. Mm. And when you link sponsorship right. with understanding the, the language of business and being relevant mm. in industry-specific uh, groups, 
Mm. You will see that it will become easy for women to practically rise through the ranks. Mm. You, you were talking about structure, right. like there has to be structure in place yes. uh, earlier. What, what kind of structure you, 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 you were you referring to earlier? I, um, sponsorship. Okay. So I'll give you, you know, I'll, I'll take it further by Do, saying Does that it have to do with the uh, what you called the mentorship and all of that is that what you also so refer to as sponsorship as well so there's the, there's a difference between who a sponsor is and who a mentor is a mentor is someone who um, takes you through their own personal experience and help you uh, kind of grow you know so that you don't make the same mistakes that they have made in the past right so that's similar to coaching but of course mm. mentorship could be more informal as opposed to coaching Right. Mm. But for sponsorship, they are key decision makers in every corporate organization. And these are the people that will, you know, um, talk about you when you are not there. Because when these decisions are being made, someone has mm. to mention your name. Right. So how visible are you? Mm. So, so there's something that I, I want us to talk about now, and that's the influence of the woman on the in the board in the boardroom taking decisions so how does a woman rise from a, a level of because you talk about you have to be there you have to be visible mm -hmm. people have to know that you merit this so w what's the process let's look at the processes now because somebody emerging um, at the top there uh, that's there's some way it's coming from uh, let's look at that okay so it's twofold. You have the internal uh, politics and you have the external politics. So it's possible for you to be visible outside for some other, um, you know, for some other cause than to be visible inside. And it's also possible for you to be visible inside hmm. based on how well you do your job. So again, I'll say um, we need to stop working in silos. So for instance, maybe you work in marketing right and you you know when you work in marketing you deal with numbers but you're going from internal to external do you see so as opposed to just staying in your marketing space it's very important for you to also um, create some form of bridge across departments whereby when um, accounting has a meeting for instance they can call you in you know to speak to the issues on ground you know and once you able to like go around and speak to different parts of the business mm -hmm. it then becomes clear that you're not only the marketing person do you see it, it becomes clear that you understand the numbers mm -hmm. so there is that also we need to speak about you being present you know having a brand right. even outside because one of the things that will really matter when it comes to boardroom boardroom politics is how you are also able to leverage connections because I was going to ask you about that there's a thin line between between meriting a particular position and then uh, politics bringing politics it does it have to be dirty when you talk about oh, politics no, 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 because no. there's a misconception about politics uh, in the boardroom okay so it's about perspective really are you um, you know, when people talk about politics sometimes and they say it's dirty, it, it's basically because it is seen as being manipulative. Right. But if you are good, you know, on the job, mm. right, I don't see how you term that as being dirty or, you right. know, as being, you know, unusually manipulative. Mm. What really matters is to ask, your qu to ask yourself if what you're doing is about the work and the organization moving forward or mm. you trying to bring the next person down mm. can you see the difference between the two if you focus on your work and also ensure that other people get their own work done because you are present mm. i believe that that is being political but not being dirty let's talk about the debate i mean there's a great debate about uh, boardroom quotas how many positions or percentage of the position in the boardroom should be given to w women of course that has been um but, but do you believe that there should be a quota allocated for women or it just it has to be about merit can you really talk about 
having a quota system without talking about merit. It has to go hand in hand. Both have to go hand in hand. I do not believe in just giving out a position to a woman just because she is a woman. Mm. I, I do not believe. No, I do let, not let, let's talk that. about the limitation around rising to that top. Um, right. Because, and again, the processes, it involves and then when it comes to impacting an organization, leading an organization, how can a woman, perhaps who is watching now, rise from that? He merit, she merits it. She, she has all the, all the capacity and all the experiences she, she, that you will require for her to lead the boardroom. Mm -hmm. But then there's that is some sort of limitation. How does that kind of person break out of that limitation and say, okay, you know what, I'm going to take um, my position at the board? Okay, so there's... Um as a woman, really, and based on the way we've been socialized in this part of this world, um, there's the tendency to want to leave for others. And how, that, how you spin that is really, you know, what would make it um, a, a game of limitations or opportunities, really. So you, you leave for others. Are you living for others in a way that waters down your essence? Mm. Or are you living for others in a way that helps you affirm your authority in that space? So I'll give you a very practical example. Um, a friend once told me that she was in a meeting with um, you know, other members in the corporate space and someone said, oh, can someone get us tea? Mm. And everybody looked at her. And you know, she just pretended like nobody was talking to her. Now, you see that based on the idea of living for others, you are expected to serve, you know, things that are, for me, may not really be helpful, mm. you know, when it comes to what is being discussed in that space. However, it is possible to also take responsibility for that and say, oh, um, we can get uh, Miss Yewande, oh, that's a job description. Let her come in to serve us tea. Can you see the difference? So. You have to consciously affirm your authority. You have to consciously show that you are not doing uh, what we call eye service. You know, you are not just trying to meet basic expectations based on your gender. Mm. Mm. You understand the difference between doing stuff yourself and outsourcing it to people who have that responsibility. In interesting you, you've, uh, points you've made there. But let's talk about the going from boardroom to impacting at the national level. So w what is the role or what, how should wo wo a woman position herself going from the boardroom and her role um, uh, as, as a woman mm -hmm. to impact uh, on national development? Okay, so that's also twofold. Mm. We could talk about getting into um, the policy making space, right, where, you, you know, that's where um, you know, you put together policies, you put together your candid um, opinion on certain issues backed by data, not mm -hmm. just, you know, not just uh, throwing things into the air. You know, you have to speak, as we said before, you have to speak the language of business. It's not about sentiment. So as a woman who is in the corporate space and who is rising, you have to consciously begin to um, liaise with people who are in that space or you look for a way to gradually you know, grow into that space mm. so that when certain conversations are being heard, you know, you are called on board to share your opinion, to share your thoughts, right. to put together a paper, you know, to um, talk about a bill, you know, things like that. Also, visibility. When you're going around doing your business, what are the other um, things you are doing by the side? Are you also mentoring women? Are you also... Um, you know, working with other uh, uh, corporate, uh, you know, corporate uh, bodies to ensure mm -hmm. that certain uh, thoughts or certain uh, views are being, you know, um, passed right. Past rights, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So that's why I said it's twofold. It's internal, it's external. Mm -hmm. You cannot let go of the external at the expense of the internal. Mm. You have to consciously juggle both so that you're making impact within the organization and you're also telling the external uh, women, ladies, girls, you know, who are looking up to you, you're letting them know that it can be done. Just before I let you go, uh, Falakemi, uh, let's 
let's look at, uh, for, I mean, in a few seconds, because I, I'm aware that our time is uh, up, but a few seconds now, uh, sharing from your own experiences and, and some of your past um, where you've worked and all of that g going forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of initiative and innovation, what should women be looking at? In terms of initiative and innovation, innovation. In, in the corporate world in businesses what should they be looking at okay, innovating so, okay so mm. again it's very important to have ideas that can move the business forward however mm. you have to consciously present those ideas so you could have so if you are a woman and you understand that there are other women who are maybe shy in the system, right. you could have meetings that encourage these other women to speak up. You know, and then you put for because you are already at the level of decision making. So if you're able to um, help the other women around you to grow, you know, that side of themselves that makes them to be assertive, that makes mm. them affirm their authority. You then become the bridge between the growing women in the organization and the management. Mm. And you're very particular about also being a sponsor, meaning that you know people who are capable of doing the work and you consciously drop their names, you know, in the spaces that matter. Mm. So Interesting. Yes, constant uh, meetings, constant brainstorming sessions with people who are capable Mm, interesting. Right, and then mentorship uh, systems, of mm. mentorship, you know, programs mm. for people in house. I, I think we need to leave it there. Thank you so much for Lakemi uh, Phillips, so is founder and lead consultant, Watslinger, uh, a creative firm aimed at positioning brands and business for profit. Thank you for coming on Thank Business Breakfast. Thank you for Breakfast. having me.